This is an industry standard Foley cue sheet. Most cue sheets are structured in groups of eight channels. This makes it very easy to organize. In the days of 35mm mag film, when we performed Foley using 4 channel 35mm stock, later we used 24 track 2 inch tape with 8 channels of cue sheets dividing a 24 track into 3 passes. Like everything in the sound disciplines, the info header needs to be filled out with the important and relevant information. You list the Foley editor who cued the reel. You always list the show title. You list the reel number and that this is Foley. Note that the author adopted the technique of listing on both sides of the cue sheet. The reason for this was very practical. On tight budget show re-recording schedules, the Foley was often not pre-dubbed. The effects re-recording mixer would often collaborate with the music re-recording mixer to share the chore of mixing the Foley into the final mix so they would literally tear the sheet in half. The effects mixer taking the first group of Foley channels, usually the footsteps, and the music mixer taking the props and cloth channels. In this technique, both sets of torn sheets would bear the real designation and the fact that it was Foley. You list the page number and the total number of pages that constitute the cues for this reel. All Foley tracks are listed as Foley 1, Foley 2, Foley 3, and so forth. Beginners often make the mistake of listing the kind of Foley in each channel. This is not an industry standard, so do not develop a bad habit. You may find you have to cue various kinds of Foley events in the same channel. How does that fit into your name in a particular channel by what kind of cue it is? The first cue is the start mark. It lists as 00 plus 00. It is not a bad idea to list the same cue in every channel. Again, this goes back to what if the sheets are split between two mixers. You need a sync pop. This precise audio sync point is vital. Never build any session without one. It lands exactly on the two of the Academy Leader, remember? That is at nine feet and zero frames in 35 millimeter terms and six seconds and zero frames in timecode terms. Some Foley editors place the pop on every channel. It is not necessary, just a handy redundant practice. The first channel is always where the most important character in the film is cued, usually the hero. In this case, the character name is listed, and the fact that this is a footstep track is listed below. Most Foley supervisors will also list what kind of surface is to be used in this second notation. Boardwalk, tile floor, dirt, grass, gravel, etc. The secondary character is cued into the second channel. You do not use multiple channels for perspective now. Cue the track as a single monophonic angle. All you are interested in is getting the performance in one cue. Later, your Foley editor may take these eight channels, and after he or she has cut and split it out for perspective, these eight channels may bloat up to 20 to 30 channels, but don't worry about that now. As you move across the cue sheet, you continue to cue each character in descending priority. You do not cue extras or background footsteps in these channels. These first few channels are for dedicated characters. Now you will cue the background extras. When your Foley artists perform these cues, they may very well bring extra performers in. Often other sound editors are asked to pause in their work and pitch in. Extras are often performed with several sets of footsteps at a time, as sync is rarely an issue. In this case, we have cued a second background channel as the scene is fairly full. Extra miscellaneous footsteps cues can be added to this track, along with various light incidental prop movement cues. This is a prop-only custom sound event track. Last, but certainly not unimportant, is the last channel. The last channel, no matter how many channels of Foley you cue, is always the cloth pass. This channel will become really important to you after the final mix when you address the M&E foreign mix. Using the line tool, 
highlight from just in front of the spot you wish the Foley artist's performance to be recorded to a couple of seconds past the out cue advertised on the Foley cue sheet. Pro Tools will automatically kick into record mode when the timecode hits this highlighted area and will kick out when it reaches the end. You do not have to highlight the cue area. If you rather, you can simply place the record headline at the spot you wish to record and later stop recording by hitting the stop button on the transport window when you wish to stop. This pre-roll is to allow your Foley artist to get focused on the action that he or she is about to perform, especially when it comes to rhythmic footsteps. Using the line tool, highlight from just in front of the spot you wish the Foley artist performance to be recorded to a couple of seconds past the out cue advertised on the Foley cue sheet. Once you have run the sequence for the Foley artist and he or she are ready to perform, take the cursor and press the button on the far right-hand side of the transport window. This is the record arming switch. Once you have armed the transport window, you are ready to roll. Make sure that you are interlocked with the timecode signal by pressing Apple keystroke J. The little window at the bottom left-hand corner of your session window will show waiting for sync. The little clock on the far left-hand side of the transport window will glow blue. Roll the picture. The record playback headline will start scrolling in the record mode. Once you have finished the cue, hit the spacebar or the stop button on the transport window. Tap twice on the audio cue that you have just recorded. It will probably say record-01. Now enter what you want the cue to be called. If you will note, the cue started at the 38th second of the fourth minute, so you can enter 04 underscore 38 underscore 00 prior to a short action name. Should something happen to your original session, you can easily make a new session and throw the cues very quickly into performed sync locations by using the minute second frame designations. Pro Tools protocol will not allow you to use a colon in the name as you would enter an underscore instead. If you receive a Foley session in stems form, the first thing you will want to do is import the individual stems into a Foley session. If you are transferring from a source medium, slave the session to a timecode of the source medium, such as DA88 or 24-track. The Foley stems will lay into your Foley session in sync. Once you have finished, go to the head and look at the first six second position in the timecode. There should be a pop there. If there is no pop, then you have no exact frame reference to start with. Your better Foley stages will always put a reference pop in their sessions. To better look for any subtle recordings, increase the waveform signature by tapping on the up arrow using the four arrow array in the upper left hand corner of your session window next to the magnifying glass. Tap on this several times until the track becomes thick black. Any subtle recordings will appear clearly now and it makes it very easy for you to determine what wasted areas you wish to eliminate. Software writers at DigiDesign will scoff and say you could just use their strip silence option under edit in the menu bar. Well, the author has used it, and even changing the presets to open the pre- and post-roll and sensitivities, but the author still experienced clipped overtones and giblet upcut cues that are really inappropriate. The author found it safer just to take a few moments and do the job manually. Like all good art forms, good craftsmanship is done by human tactile interaction. And like all programmed parameters, computers only do things literally. They do not judge or evaluate. Now you will quickly go through and decide which areas of silence you wish to eliminate. It is important to work in grid mode with a one second nudge grid option for fast resyncing. Highlight the areas of silence you want to do away with and delete. Once you have done that, tap twice on each cue and rename it. Once you have renamed the cues, highlight all the audio cues in the session. Then go up to the bar above the region list with the audio designation and open that menu. Come down to Export Selected as Files. A menu will come up asking you what audio format you want, what sample rate, etc. 
You need to choose a target folder to put these new audio cues. Once you have set the parameters of the export, initiate the transfer. The session will output each cut region as a new audio file named with the new name that you gave the cut region in the session. Once the process is complete, go back up to the audio bar and import these new files. They will line up as bold black titles against the non-bold cut region names. The bold black titled audio cues are your new files. Now is when the grid mode of one second really pays off. You can quickly grab and pull in and snap to sync each bold titled audio file against its cut region counterpart very quickly. Once you have done this, you can save and close your session. Open your session folder where the original Foley stems reside and drag them into your computer's trash barrel and flush them away. Take a moment to be sure that all you are throwing away are the original stems and not your newly created audio files. You will probably discover that you have reduced your drive space consumption by at least 60%, oftentimes as high as 80%. This makes it far more efficient to work with, both for you as well as shipping data and archival. Audio File Name Strategy for Foley Cues if you hope to find a particular audio file in the session full of countless footstep, prop, and cloth cues, you will want to adopt a standard make sense approach to giving your audio files their unique names. This is a typical Foley cue name. Note the three letter abbreviation for the show. If the post production facility you are working with is working on more than one project at the same time, this technique is even more vital. The first number is the real number. The second number is the minute of the time code. The third number is the second of the time code. You should get accustomed to working in an even second grid mode when you record fully. This technique will always commence at the even second frame, making it vastly easier to relace up your Foley cues in sync should your Foley session become corrupted and you have to start over. The character and action is listed here. You list the take number. Notice that you place the take number in parentheses. Much like using an underscore as the last symbol in the name chain, you use this to keep Pro Tools from adding confusing numerical designation once you have made a cut into the primary audio file.